Today I'm going to be giving away the Neat Stick X wireless Bluetooth thermometer. We're going to put this thing through its paces by reverse searing a tri-tip, sous viding a New York strip steak, and then deep frying a chicken breast. We're going to test the claims, we're going to show you what I like and what I don't like, and we'll also go over how you can enter the contest to win one of these yourselves. My name is Rich, this is Rex Barbecue and Grill, let's get reviewing. Okay, the Meat Stick X. We're gonna be doing a review on this. People at Meat Stick have agreed to allow me to give away one of these to one of you viewers. I'll explain how to enter the contest later in the video. We're gonna run this thing through its paces, starting with a tri-tip, just keeping it nice and simple. We're gonna start off with some salt. And shout out to Chrissy for adjusting that I use one of these salt containers. Some pepper and some garlic powder. And again, it's a little bit of a windy day, so hopefully this doesn't get blown all over the place. We'll get our garlic powder on here, flip it over, and repeat on the back side with the salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Okay, this is ready for the smoker. I'm gonna show you guys how to set up the meat stick. It's supported on Android and iOS. I'm using an Android device. We'll start by just opening up the app and it'll give you directions all the way through the process so it's, it's really easy to do. We're gonna start by hitting the button on the charger base itself, turn it on. Now you can see it's detected the charging base. We're gonna tap set up cook. They have some guided cooks here for you based on what you're going to be doing. We're gonna start with the quick start. Obviously change that well done to medium rare, 135 degrees. Our target ambient temperature. I have the smoker preheating at 235 degrees right now. So we'll change that to match 235. Internal temperature is set at 135. Hit next. Sending the cook to the meat stick now. Synchronizing it to the cloud. Keep that in mind. You have a cloud account with this. That's important. We'll talk about it a little bit more later. Now it's telling us to insert the thermometer. So we'll take it and we're going to insert this into the thickest part of the meat, which will be from the side here. The important thing, let me turn this around so you can see it. The important thing is when you insert this, you need to go all the way in the ceramic tip on the back of this. Once that's done, we go back to the app and say start cooking. Now we'll throw it on the smoker and we'll go through the app and show you how you can monitor what you're cooking. All right, so here on the app you can see elapsed time in the bottom left corner. That's in minutes, so one minute. 91 degrees is your ambient. 47 degrees is the internal temperature you have your battery and your Bluetooth connection. If you tap on it, it gives you a larger screen, more of a real time. You can see the elapse is a minute 45 right now. Remaining, the remaining time will start to appear once the temperatures have started to come up internally and kind of level off. So that, that'll take a few minutes to come up. Um, let's talk about ambient temperature. And this isn't a problem with the meat stick itself. This happens with all of the wireless thermometers that, that I've used, that I've experienced. Um, ambient, because the ambient temperature is at the back end of that probe on the black part of that ceramic handle, you have the coolness of the meat, of the tri-tip in our case, that affects that ambient temperature. So even though the smoker is at 235 and we're reading right now 111, it'll get close, but it'll, it'll, it could be like 20 degrees off. Um, so the ambient's kind of a reference in my mind that I watch to make sure that it's not going to go up above or too far below. So just keep that in mind. And what the meat stick software does is it'll take your internal temperature and your ambient temperature and using its algorithm it'll figure out the time remaining to um, your specific temperature that you set for the cook. So that's one of the other things about this is if we tap the edit button down here you can see our alert settings. Early warning right now it sets 130 so it accounts for your carryover cooking. So it, right now if we were to leave this run to 135 degrees at 130 degrees I'll get a notification on the phone telling me it's time to pull it. Um, since we're reverse searing, we want it to smoke for a little bit and pull it way before that 130 so we can get it on the grill and give it a nice sear. We're going to change our early warning and we're gonna say at 120 degrees, send me that early warning. So when I hit 120 degrees, even though my target's still set at 135, when I hit 120, it's gonna send me an alert. We're gonna come out here, we're gonna pull it off and we're gonna sear it on the grill. Hit save to save the changes. 
Oh, I should mention also, let's go back to edit, the ambient temperature alerts. So this is nice for you guys that have um, a propane smoker, for example. I used to have a propane smoker and this happened a couple times to me. You can turn your ambient temperature warning on and tell it if the temperature falls below a certain degree to send you an alert. Maybe your propane ran out. Maybe the wind got into the, the cabinet and, and blew out the flame and it starts dropping. You didn't know. You go out there in an hour or so and check and find out nothing's been running. So that's a cool feature. Um, got the pellet grill. I got the hopper filled. I'm not worried about that right now, but I just wanted to show you guys that. We'll talk a little bit about the features of this thing. Max internal temperature is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Max ambient temperature, so the temperature of your grill itself is 572 degrees Fahrenheit. The base itself is magnetic, so you can stick it on your grill, which is nice. Some of them don't have magnets in them like that, some of the competition. Go back to the phone. So one of the other things I wanted to show you on the app itself is there, at least on Android, there's a, a home screen widget. So if we go down the widgets, hit meat stick. Now I've got a nice quick glance widget on my screen that shows my elapsed time, my internal and my ambient temperature. The only thing I don't like about the widget, not a big deal, but it's just me being particular, is tapping on it does not take you to the app. Nowhere on this widget will it actually open up the main app for you. Not a big deal, but just wanted to point that out. Let's go back to the actual app. You also see you're cooking a notification shade as well. Tapping that will bring you back to the app. Now, their claims for distance, this, this particular model, the X, has a 260 feet line of sight range, which means with this sitting on top of the grill, I should be able to walk to the back of my yard, which is about 275 feet to the, to the property line and still have a connection. Indoors is 100 feet. I've walked everywhere on my first floor of the home and I had no problem keeping connection and I'll walk to the backyard now to show you guys how well this works. Okay here we are at 275 feet and as you can see this thing is still rock solid on its connection. The other cool features of the software for the Meat Stick X it's modular so you can buy additional meat sticks and up to eight will talk to this extender so you don't have a bunch of them all connected doing that whole song and dance so everything's integrated like I said everything's module they have a mini meat stick so if you have a smaller piece of meat like a piece of fish or a tenderloin or something that this this particular thermometer would be too long for they make a smaller version of this and it's all integrated into the same system if you want to go beyond Bluetooth reach and you want to be on the internet doing a long cook doing a pork shoulder or a brisket and you need to run down to the grocery store but you still want to keep an eye on things you have two options. They have a Wi-Fi extender that will work with this setup, or what you can do, if you have an extra phone, you set it up exactly the way that we set it up on the phone here. Connect it to your Wi-Fi. It doesn't have to be an active phone, meaning it doesn't have to have a cell network. Just take an extra phone that you may have laying around, configure it to be on your Wi-Fi, ensure you have internet connection, install the Meat Stick app, start your cook, and then you grab your second phone, install the app, log in, and you'll be able to monitor over the internet. That gets into what I mentioned previously, the cloud account. Because when you set up a cook, it log, you're logged in, it sends your cook up to the cloud. So your second phone, logged in with the same account, will pull all that information down. So that's, that's the free way of doing it, just if you have an extra phone. Otherwise, you can buy the actual extender and everything ties in together. Another cool feature with the software that I did not see advertised on the website, so I say that with a, a word of caution, maybe it's not really ready for prime time, but we have the Amazon Echoes throughout the house here. They have a skill for it. So now that the cook is set up and everything's going, you don't have your phone on you, or you don't want to pull it out because you're a geek like I am, you just want to talk to the, to the Echo device, all you got to do is say, Alexa, ask the meat stick to check on my meat. The internal temperature of your quick start is 68 degree and ambient is 195 degree. It will be done in one minute. Now, as you heard, it'll be done in one minute is not correct. So I'm sure they're still working on this. That's why we're not hearing a lot about it on the website. But it's there if you want to play with it. Probably don't, don't count on it 100%, but it, it's a cool feature and it's a, it's, a, it's a taste of what possibly is to come from them. So another thing to point out, and this is a Bluetooth thing, it's not a meat stick limitation. It's the, the Bluetooth protocol itself, is when your grill is closed, you need to be within six feet of that grill in order for the probe to talk to the extender, and then the extender will handle getting the communication going to your phone. On an open grill, you can be up to 33 feet away. So I like to keep mine just right up on top. 
So that's less than six feet away, obviously, sitting right up on top like that, so I should be good. All right, so let's talk about the contest. Like I said, Meat Stick has agreed to allow me to give away one of their Meat Stick X devices. I have the link to the contest rules in the description below. Please take a minute to go over there and read them and make sure you understand them. The important rules are that you have to be a resident of the United States, 13 years or older. You need to be a subscriber of the channel. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And finally, leave a comment on this video below. You can say whatever you want. There's nothing specific I'm looking for. So if you're a subscriber and you leave a comment, that'll get you entered in the contest. I'm gonna run the contest from three weeks from the day that the video posts. And the people over at Meat Stick have also given me a code for anybody that wants to buy any of their products, not just the Meat Stick X, for 10%. So you guys all get a 10% discount if you wanna go and purchase one. That code is right here, RAX10. Enter it at checkout and they'll knock 10% off your purchase for you. Those are the rules for the contest. We're gonna let this tri-tip roll. When it hits at 120 degrees, we'll pull it out and give it a sear. Stick around for the rest of the video because I'm gonna test sous vide the New York Strip. And then after that, we're gonna deep fry a chicken breast, completely submerging the thermometer, which I'm really looking forward to see. It's either gonna go very well, it's gonna go horribly wrong. I was shocked to hear that we can actually deep fry something like this. So uh, it's, it's gonna be fun to go through it. It'll be quick, I promise, so we'll be right back. Okay, our early warning has gone off. As you can see on this screen here, 120 degrees, so it's time us to pull it out of the smoker. Hit okay, get this thing off. Okay, we're gonna let this rest for a few minutes while the grill comes up to temperature and we're gonna put a nice sear on it. Tri-tip is rested. I got the bullseye set at 500 degrees, so it's nice and ripping hot. We're gonna get a nice sear on this thing now. still monitoring the temperature. Time remaining right now is calculated at seven minutes. We've been running a little bit over an hour. So we're just gonna get this a quick sear on both sides. Keep an eye on our internal temperature so we don't go over our 135. We're gonna take it really close because we've already rusted, so carry over cooking shouldn't come into play too much here. Okay, we've reached 132 per the app. We're gonna pull this thing out now. Get the thermometer out of here. Careful, that's hot. Give it a couple minutes to let it rust. It doesn't have to go as long as it did last time, and then we'll slice into it. In the meantime, check it with the Thermapen Pro. There we go, 135. Right on the money. And this is a very accurate thermometer, so this is right up on par with this thing. I'm very happy with it. All right, so a tri-tip, as most of you know, the grain runs in two different directions, so we're gonna cut right in the middle. That's about where the thermometer was at. You can see, you got a nice medium right there. I mean, look at that. That's money right there, man. This thermometer did an excellent job of keeping my temperatures right where I wanted them to be. And a tri-tip is on point. All right, so that's the first cook. We got two more to do. Next up, we're gonna sous vide the New York strip steaks. Stick around and keep watching. Okay, strip steak, we're gonna do it the same way we did the tri-tip. Some salt, fresh pepper, and some garlic powder. Okay, it's seasoned, and just like before, we're gonna set up the cook. This time, we're gonna set it up for the grill, beef, steak. We're gonna change it from medium to medium rare. As you can see, target internal, just like before 135, we're doing sous vide, so similar to being in the smoker, we're gonna crank this down to 120. Ambient temperature. We had the sous vide set at 120 as well. Sinking up to the cloud so we can monitor it from a Wi-Fi connection if we had that set up. We're gonna put the thermometer in the thickest part of the meat, making sure we're pushed all the way up to the ceramic handle. Get our sous vide bag, steak into the bag. With the seasoning, we're gonna throw a couple pads of butter in there as well. And I'm gonna go in the house and get this sealed up and then we'll throw it into the sous vide. Steaks in the bag, drop it in the water bath, hit start cooking on our app, and we'll keep an eye on things from here. We'll come back once this is up to temperature and put a nice sear on it. Okay, the meat stick app says that we're at 120 degrees, so we are going to pull this out of the sous vide. It has survived. Put in the sous vide for 47 minutes. It's still talking, so it survived the sous vide test. We're gonna get a nice sear on this now, same way we did the tri-tip. Get 
that sear going. One thing I should have mentioned when we were doing the tri-tip, this is a pellet grill and it's got a heat shield on it, so I don't get very many flare-ups on it. You want to pull the thermometer out if you're doing this over like a charcoal grill. You don't want the flames to come up and hit that thing. You will damage the probe. 572 degrees is the max ambient temperature, but if it's in a direct flame, it's, it's going to destroy it. So keep that in mind. Keep an eye on the internal temperature. It's at 120 now. Give it a couple flips until we get up closer to our 130, 132, and we'll be done. Okay, we are at about 135. It went a little longer than I wanted it to. That's not a meat stick problem. That's a rich problem. So this is probably going to be a little bit higher than I wanted it to be. Yeah, we are at 145 right now. We'll check it with a thermo pen just to see if it matches the temperature. And it does. So yeah, we're a little bit higher than I wanted it to be. Again, not meat sticks issue, that's my issue. So, so far we've covered a reverse sear in the smoker to the grill, sous vide to the grill. Next up, we're gonna deep fry a chicken breast. Stick around. Okay, last and final cooking test, but there is one more test we're gonna do after this, so make sure you stick around. We're gonna deep fry this bone-in chicken breast. Just a quick recipe, I've got some flour, salt, pepper, paprika, garlic powder. We're gonna put it into the egg wash first. Get it nice and coated into our flour. Nothing fancy, we're just doing this for the test. And start just like we did with the other two pieces of meat. We'll get our app going, and this time we'll hit set up cook. We'll scroll down to deep fry, poultry, chicken breast. It automatically set it to 165 for the internal temperature and 350 for the target ambient, which is what I had the deep fryer preheated to right now. Hit next, let it send it up to the cloud, and then we'll be ready to put the thermometer again into the thickest part of this chicken breast without hitting the bone. Let's start cooking, and we're off to the races. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm nervous about this one. I, it's a deep fry, an electronic device. They say we can do it, so we're gonna do it. We'll keep an eye on it on the phone and check back on it in a few minutes. Okay, this thing has been completely submerged in the deep fryer for 21 minutes now. Let me show you guys. We're at 144 degrees, 21 minutes and 19 seconds. We got about five minutes remaining. I have flipped it about every five to seven minutes because I this it's a honking piece of chicken breast, let me tell you. And they must have raised these things next to a nuclear power plant or something. So not enough oil to have it completely covered. So I've been flipping it every few minutes to keep it going on both sides. Another four minutes now, and we'll be ready to pull it out and we'll check it with the thermopro. Okay, I got my early warning that we've hit 162, so it's recommending that we pull this out and let the carryover cooking finish the process for us to 165. We have been submerged in the deep fryer for close to 26 minutes, and this thing's still talking. Incredible, I'm, I'm floored. I, I was really nervous that this was gonna go sideways on me, but um, it worked out well. We're at 164 now, another degree. We'll check it. Well, actually, let's check it now. 164. We'll try and get the thermopen in. Oh, there we go. 165. Try and get the thermopen in close to where we have the thermometer. 166. Pretty damn good. So we have one last test. So first, let's pull this thing out. Don't touch it like I just did because it's hot. So the easiest way to clean these is just with a Scotch Brite pad. Soap and water. Clean the probe. The important part is the end right here because this makes contact when it's charging back into the base. But they claim that this is dishwasher safe. I'm throwing it in the dishwasher. Let's get into the house. Okay, so dishwasher safe, we're gonna find out. I'm just gonna throw it in the basket here. Get it going. Check on it in 84 minutes. Okay, 84 minute dishwasher cycle. Let's get it back in the charger. See if it still works. There it is. Just set up a cook to show you guys. I'll do an air fryer, beef. Prime rib in an air fryer. Start cooking. It's talking to it. So it survived all four tests that I did with it, right? We use it in a smoker, then on the grill. We use it in a sous vide, then on the grill. We deep fried it. That was the impressive one. Then we threw it in the dishwasher for an 84 minute cycle and it survived that as well. So that's it. This thing has survived my test. Would I recommend it? Yeah, absolutely. The accuracy of it matching the, the Thermopen 1 that I have, that was very impressive. It's worth a $99. Great range, up to 260 feet outdoors, 100 feet indoors. Don't forget to enter the contest. I'm going to run it for about three weeks. So our contest will end June 1st at 6 p.m. I'm hoping to select the winner soon after that. If not, within 24 hours, I'll announce the winner. Thanks everybody for watching, and we'll see you next time.